Hello and welcome! In this video, we are going to learn about CoAP, the Constraint Application Protocol. It is designed as an application layer protocol, typically used in IoT environments. The CoAP protocol operates in a very similar way to the HTTP protocol. However, CoAP is more lightweight, and this makes it suitable for constrained devices. Now that we have introduced the basics of CoAP, let's go deeper and explore the CoAP header. Unlike the HTTP protocol, the CoAP header is binary coded. The first 32 bits are mandatory and divided into several fields, starting with the version. This 2 bit field indicates the CoAP version, which is always set to 1. Following this, the type field, also 2 bits, specify the message type, which can be confirmable, non confirmable, acknowledgement, or reset. This classification is used to manage the reliability of data transmission. Next, the token length field specifies the length of the token that follows the mandatory header. More details on this will be provided later in this video. After that, we have the code field. It is composed of 8 bits. The top 3 bits specify the message class, while the remaining 5 bits provide the details. Let's take the request class as an example. Within this class, the detail 0 for empty and 1 to 7 for methods like get, post, put, and so on. Another notable example is the famous 404 error, where the first digit 4 indicates it belongs to the class of client error response, and the last two digits 04 specify that the detail of the error is not found. Finally, the message ID field, consisting of 16 bits, uniquely identifies each message across the network, enabling tracking and ensuring reliability. For instance, when sender transmits a confirmable message identified by a specific message ID, the receiver will use the same message ID in its response. This ensures that responses are correctly matched to their original requests. The second part of the header is optional and it begins with a token. It comprises 0 to 8 bytes depending on the value in the token length field. This token is used to associate a request with its corresponding response. When sender transmits a request, it expects to receive a response in the acknowledgement message. If the request isn't immediately processed, the sender resends the request each time the timer expires. To manage this, CoAP uses tokens. Instead of the initial scenario, the sender includes a token within the request. The receiver acknowledges this message and processes the request. Once the response is ready, it is transmitted back in a confirmable message that carries the same token used in the original request. Since the mandatory header in CoAP contains limited information, options are essential. Before we delve deeper into specific CoAP options, let's first understand how CoAP generally handles them. Each option is assigned to a unique number, arranged in increasing order. To represent an option, the difference between two consecutive values is encoded in 4 bits. This is followed by the length, as options can have different sizes, and finally, the option data itself. For example, if we want to perform a GET request for the resource hello.txt and receive the result in ASCII format, we will use two options, the URI path option number 11 and the accept option number 17 for the format. For the first option, the URI path, the delta is 11 since it's the first option. This is followed by the length, which is 9 for hello.txt, and then the actual characters of the element. To encode the second option, the accept option, we calculate the delta, which is 6, 17 minus 11. For the format, ASCII text has value of 0, therefore the length is 1, and the data is 0. The message ends with a delimiter 0xff to indicate the end of the options and the start of the payload. Finally, the co-op message will be encapsulated in a UDP message and it is ready to be sent. 